Hey guys, welcome back to Mainstream Cryptos. If you're new to the channel, my name's Abby, and this is the space where we take a weekly look at what is hot and happening in the crypto world. Today, we're going to look at the top 15 news events from the last week, and I can tell you there's a lot been going on, so you better grab a hold of your seat. Let's get stuck in. The first thing is that a Spanish bank has proposed for a wholesale CBDC project. Banks Spain has proposed a wholesale CBDC project, according to the Coindesk, on Monday. The proposal is for various financial institutions and technology service providers. According to an official statement from the bank, the program intends to increase the usage of CBDCs in wholesale transactions. What are wholesale transactions? Let me explain. Wholesale transactions are those in which revenue is transferred between banks and financial institutions. Furthermore, the official statement stated that it intends to experiment with the integration of a wholesale CBDC with financial assets and to assess the potential benefits and drawbacks of its implementation. The companies who are showing interest in the project have all filed bids before the deadline January the 31st and have also stated that the initiative is unrelated to any research effort in the European Union. So that is definitely something to keep an eye on. Meanwhile, our next piece of news is happening on the opposite side of the world. Ethereum's Shanghai upgrade is expected to be released in March 2023. This is big news. The Ethereum core developer has announced that the next major upgrade, the Shanghai upgrade, will be released on March 2023, and this upgrade will allow users to permit their staked Ether withdrawals. According to the Duna Analytics crypto data tracker, some of the 15.57 million Ether, or nearly 13% of all tokens, have indeed been locked in special staking wallets that assist in the sorting of transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. And the network is the largest commercial highway in crypto, housing thousands of apps. Owners of stacked Ether earn interest, but are unable to withdraw their coins until a software upgrade is released. The ability to withdraw staked Ether is expected to encourage more users to stake and improve network security. The previous upgrade, known as the Merge, replaced Ethereum power-hungry machines, known as miners, with so-called validators in September. So, keep an eye out for Ethereum's Shanghai upgrade coming March 2023. Boom. Moving on to our next piece of news. The major Shibu Inu whale adds more and extends holdings to 13.9 trillion. That is a flipping lot. Major Shibu Inu whale added 2.8 trillion SHIB in the past 24 hours and 3.05 trillion in the past 30 days. As of press time, the whale holds 13.93 trillion. Etherscan.io recently reported that the 8th biggest Shibu Inu whale accumulated a staggering 2.8 trillion, worth 25.98 million, via just one significant transaction, which was executed on the 9th of November, I believe. The 9th of December, pardon me. The whale's interest in Shiba Inu grows overwhelmingly, as several developments in Shiba Inu ecosystem continue to occur rapidly. The price of SHIB is rebounding, trading at 0.00000931, which is up 1.3% in 24 hours. So that is one recent dynamic change. And speaking of recent and dynamic, let's take a look at this question. Is Sam Bankman freed to be arrested during house testimony visit to the US? My, my, my. This guy has himself in a kettle of fish. FTX is apparently ready to testify. This week, a Senate Banking Committee hearing on the FTX bankruptcy was scheduled, but Bankman Fried infamously missed the deadline to respond to the committee's invitation to come and testify. Bankman Fried later agreed to testify before the House Committee after California Representative Maxine Waters threatened to subpoena him. Perry has stated, Perry is a former senior trial attorney from the US Commodity Futures Trading Commission. 
he has stated that there is a possibility that Bankman Freed will be taken into custody by the United States if he enters the country. According to a statement made by Michael Zweibach, a Los Angeles-based criminal defense attorney, also agreed with Perry's views and further remarked, The fact of the matter is that the Southern District of New York could arrest him based on probable cause based upon a complaint, and then they could pursue a grand jury indictment. So lots of juicy drama coming up with regards to Sam Bagman Freed. I'm not surprised, and I think that this is going to be quite a drawn-out process. So stay tuned. And before we move on, can I just take the opportunity of saying that giving us a comment and a like and subscribing to the channel is a great way to do that. Now, moving on, guess what we shall be talking about next? Bitcoin. Will Nasdaq's next move affect Bitcoin's price in the short term? Hmm, interesting question there. In recent times, the price of Bitcoin has maintained a close association with the performance of the stock market in the United States. During periods in which the price of the stock was aggressively rising, the price of Bitcoin also rose, however in a range that was relatively lower. Given the scenario, significant changes in the Nasdaq stock market could create an impact on the prices of cryptocurrencies in the short term. According to data, the Nasdaq has been above the trend risk support, as can be seen from the image below. And there you can see. You can see the trend line support shown as the green line. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is also currently resting on support at a trend line, as can be seen from the figure below. Again, there you see the green trend line. Given the association between the stock market and Bitcoin, there is possible anticipation of a reversal in the cryptocurrency market if the stock market is supported here. If the stock market is not supported, then analysts expect a continuation of the downward trend. That's definitely something that's going to be fascinating to watch in the future. And in my opinion, a correlation between these two markets could be quite a positive thing. Moving on, however, our next news title is this. GameStop plans to step back from crypto amid plunging revenue. Oh dear, plunging revenue. That never sounds good. American video game retailer GameStop has announced that it is redirecting its focus from crypto-related businesses. The company came to this decision after it recorded a net loss of almost $95 million in Q3, or the third quarter. In addition, GameStop laid off most members of its digital asset team. The CEO of GameStop, by the name of Matt Furlong, clarifies that the company has proactively minimized its exposure to cryptocurrencies over the year. That is generally seen to be a wise move in light of FTX and the recent developments there. Furlong also mentioned that the company currently has no material balance in any token. I quote, this is, these are the words of the CEO Furlong. Although we continue to believe there is long-term potential for digital assets in the gaming world, we have not and will not risk meaningful stockholder capital in this space. So their take is better safe than sorry and they intend to be wise and careful. This definitely contrasts with the opinion of others who seeing little to no potential for disaster in the crypto world are continuing to invest to a very large extent. I mean, as we'll see on our next piece of news, people everywhere are panicking, which is what I would call it, panicking, with regard to assets in the crypto world, assets related to cryptocurrency. There's a lot of basically bad publicity when it comes to crypto. The sad effect of FTX's downfall, but not necessarily true. For example, let's take a look at this. U.S. Senators demand answers from U.S. regulators on the banking sector's exposure to crypto. U.S. Senators Elizabeth Warren and Tina Smith are demanding answers from a group of top U.S. regulators about the banking, banking sector's exposure to crypto in the wake of FTX's implosion last month. The Senators are asking the regulators how their respective agencies are assessing the risks associated with the intertwining of crypto assets and traditional banking. 
It's exactly what I just mentioned, risks associated with. Thankfully, the banking system has been spared of the FTX-induced turmoil. Despite the industry's efforts to gain access to the banking system and the benefits that come with federal recognition from bank regulators, crypto is, so far, not deeply integrated with the traditional banking system. Nevertheless, it appears that crypto firms may have closer ties to the banking system than previously understood. According to a New York Times report, Alameda, which siphoned $10 billion off the FDX exchange and into its coffers, under a scheme coordinated by Sam Bankman-Fried and other FDX and Alameda executives, made an $11.5 million investment in Washington state-based Moonstone Bank, more than double the bank's worth at the time. The senators go on to request that regulators provide the names of specific banks under their jurisdiction that are involved with crypto activities. So the authorities are really, really cracking down hard on all crypto-related activity, especially when it starts to invade the private sector. Let's take a look at another example. Firms to disclose their crypto exposure to SEC. Companies that have any kind of exposure to crypto assets, including doing business with crypto-related companies, are required by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, that is SEC, to make such information public. In addition, businesses must detail how client crypto assets were protected and how company closures impacted their operations, as per a December the 8th guidance. The agency's guidelines state, these are the words, in meeting their disclosure obligations, companies should consider the need to address crypto asset market developments in their filings generally, including in their business descriptions, risk factors, and management's discussions and analysis. Following the demise of FTX, concerns about financial contagion in crypto markets and heightened monitoring by the SEC have led to this announcement. Crypto firms push for proof of reserves audits. In light of recent occurrences, namely the FTX collapse, the concept of proof of reserves has gained significant attention as a means to increase transparency by making information formally kept under wraps available to the public. The exchanges are competing to show their users that the assets traded on their platform are secure in order to attract and retain customers. If you ask me, it's one tremendous blow up, and in my opinion, most of it is merely panic generated by the media, generated by over alerted, generated by overreacting authorities, etc. However, I don't say this to mean that everyone is necessarily on the wrong track here. Of course, there are risks. But I think that confidence and the natural built-in security that blockchain does provide will eventually win out. The next piece of news is actually an example of this, so let's take a look at it. The UK is pushing crypto efforts forward through financial service reforms. So, someone is rooting for crypto. The United Kingdom's Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, laid out a number of reforms aiming to drive growth and competitiveness to the country's financial services sector, including efforts that support the crypto space. This is a pleasant change. In an announcement, the UK government highlighted that it will create a smarter regulatory framework for the country that it describes as agile, less costly, and more responsive to emerging trends. Topics mentioned in the announcement include consulting on proposals for the establishment of a central bank digital currency, CBDC, extending a crypto tax break for investment managers, bringing stable coins into the regulatory perimeter, and creating a sandbox that lets firms and regulators test new technologies that have the potential to transform financial markets. On November the 4th, the UK government also started looking into non-fungible tokens, NFTs, or also known as NEFTs, because of the growth of the sector. Members of the UK's Digital, Culture, Media and Sport Committee, 
opened a public inquiry to make an assessment of NEFT assets before a review can be performed by the UK Treasury. This is fascinating. In spite of recent developments, the UK government looks as if they're eager to pursue this, regardless. And, on a similar note, a leading Swiss bank now offers Bitcoin, Ethereum, Matic and Link trading. A leading Swiss private bank with $30 billion in AUM, bank size, recently announced the launch of its size crypto offering, which would see the Geneva-based firm provide its Swiss and international clients with digital asset services, including trading and custody. At the launch of the offering, bank size will support Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, and Chainlink, as revealed in an official press release published Monday. Bank size's involvement in cryptocurrencies underlines the growing attention the industry has been receiving of late. Private banks, in particular, have been interested in digital assets since 2018, as they attempt to provide crypto services to their clients. This really supports what I was saying earlier, that in my opinion, confidence is going to win out at the end of the day. The world is never going to go backwards. We're not going to reverse the changes in the digital world that have already been made. It's only going to go on from here. Personally, what I see eventually is banks everywhere being tied up inextricably with crypto because that is where investment and finance is going. It can't be argued with but moving on, we have five more interesting pieces of news to cover here. Global Finance Magazine highlights Ripple's push into Africa's payment industry. Global Finance Magazine, a prominent monthly financial magazine, has highlighted Ripple's recent push into the African payment industry. According to an article published today, the leading Silicon Valley tech company parted with MFS Africa to facilitate real-time crypto-enabled payments across 35 African countries, using its on-demand liquidity solution. Ripple's decision to enhance the African payment industry using ODL comes as financial inclusion becomes a critical issue in the region. In a statement, Ripple said Africa's population is expected to hit a whopping 1.7 billion by 2013. Brooks Entwistle, Ripple's SVP for global customer success, said, Crypto can and is, I think that's a spelling mistake there, crypto can and will eliminate the traditional problems associated with cross-border payments, such as lengthy transfer times, unreliability and excessive cost, while complementing our formerly purely fiat financial infrastructure at low cost. This is an apparently good piece of news. Something similar is happening in Kenya. A Bitcoin mining project has helped power a rural community. Gridless Compute, a hydro-powered Bitcoin mining initiative, tweeted that the project has successfully powered a rural community and lowered its existing energy rates. A hydro-powered crypto mining project based in Africa released an update on its efforts to bring energy developments to rural communities via Bitcoin. On December the 9th, Gridless Compute tweeted photos and commentary on how their hydropower Bitcoin mining rigs are powering an entire rural settlement, while also lowering energy rates for 2,000 people, the equivalent of 500 families. That is a lot. According to the tweet, costs decrease from $10 per month to $4. That is also a huge change. According to Gridless, the funds from this round will be used to further the expansion of Bitcoin mines across African markets while targeting rural communities for accessible energy. Miles Suter, an active personality in the Bitcoin community and lead at Cash App, visited one of the sites in rural Kenya. Suter highlighted the renewable energy aspect of the project, as Bitcoin mining has previously come under major scrutiny for its harsh environmental impact. That's positive to hear that this renewable energy aspect is proving that Bitcoin mining is not necessarily the booty it has been made out to be. We're going to jump topic here and take a look at Coinbase, who is advising clients to convert Tether, USDT, into Circle's USDC. 
top US-based crypto exchange platform Coinbase is issuing a warning to its customers, advising them to convert their Tether, USDT, stablecoin holdings, into USD coin. In a new company blog post, Coinbase tells its customers that USD coin is one of the most trusted, reputable stablecoins on the market, and says that it would behoove them to convert their USDT into USDC as a means of securing their assets during times of market turmoil. Coinbase also notes that it will be waiving fees to convert USDT to USDC. On that, if anyone is wanting to do so, the fee waiver makes it seem like this is the right time. On another note, our last topic for today is news on NEFTs. Let's take a look at what's happening in this market. NEFT sales are at a 16-month low following the FTX implosion. FTX implosion again. A Bloomberg report states that NEFT volumes have dropped to a 16-month low weeks following the FTX's collapse. That's not surprising. The market has been under a bit of pressure. Sales of non-fungible tokens, NEFTs, have been going downhill after they became popular last year. Magic Eden was the only NEFT marketplace observed by DAP Radar to see growth in sales last month. The only one. That's pretty bad. X2Y2 saw a fall from $145 million to $69 million in volume. OpenSea observed a drop from $226 million to $174 million. Its once complete dominance of the NEFT industry has been severely eroded after OpenSea cut 20% of its staff due to the microeconomic difficulties and the seasonal bad market in crypto in July this year. So that's not looking good. But NEFT interest is expanding despite the continuous downturn in the sales. Last week's developments show that several industries are still keen on releasing their NEFT collections. So this might just be a minor drop in confidence. The Japanese video game corporation Atari, for example, as well as Mattel, one of the largest toy makers in the world, including Opera and lastly the decentralized cryptocurrency exchange Uniswap, which now supports the trading of NEFTs. So, on the one hand, the demand is definitely dropping, but that doesn't mean the bottom of the market is falling out, because, as you can see, prestigious firms still definitely have confidence that there is going to be, for the foreseeable future at least, a sustainable market. And lastly, Starbucks rolls out beta testing on new Polygon-powered NEFT reward programs. This is related to just what we just covered. US coffee giant Starbucks is launching the better version of a new rewards program that allows members to earn and buy non-fungible tokens, NEFTs, minted on the Polygon blockchain. In a recent statement, the world's largest coffee house chain says that it is rolling out Starbucks Odyssey, a loyalty program for customers, employees and partners of the firm in the US who signed up to be included in the program's waiting list. Members can participate in a series of interactive activities called journeys. Once completed, they get rewarded with journey stamp nefts minted on Matic and Odyssey points that will unlock new benefits and experiences. The Seattle-based company says it sent the first batch of invitations this month and will continue to send more invitations to a wider group of people starting January 2023. If you're in the US and you like coffee, that piece of news is definitely for you. But for the rest of us, um, it's definitely an indication, in my opinion at least, that the market for nets is not going nowhere, definitely going somewhere. Although, obviously, along the way, they are going to be minor and perhaps even major wobbles or inconsistencies in demand. And that's it, guys. That's our news for this week. I hope that was helpful. Don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe. It mean a lot to us. And don't forget to make good decisions when it comes to investing, will you? I'll be seeing you next week.